C.J. Perry, or should we just call her the Hot Flexible Wife? Yeah, she doesn't have a name yet. She is the Hot Flexible Wife, H H W F. No, H H H F W. H F W. Yeah, uh, she does a promo, and I thought she was awesome here. She did a good it, job. It's, it's a this video a package. Promo. It was pre-taped video package, not a promo, but it, regardless, her, her delivery was tremendous. You left me, she says, and you said you wouldn't return until you won gold. But when you lost that TNT title, you lost yourself. I just wanted to prove I still had your back, but apparently you've truly given up on your hot, flexible wife. I was so torn. I was so torn. I sat on the sidelines for two years, tearing myself down, asking if I still had what it takes. I was once the coldest manager in all of wrestling, and I think I want to do it again. And she gives an evil smile and walks off stage. This was, uh, remember I was talking about the, the Miro storyline and like, this is a very simplistic storyline and after two years we know almost jack shit. So they do the CJ promo, presumably that's her name, and when it was over... I have only slightly more understanding of what's going on than I did before. We at least now know that after he lost the TNT title, he left her. <laughs> That's the only thing that has been added to this story. Well, we have no. no idea what she's done. We have no idea what he's done. We have no idea what's happening. Apparently they didn't speak at all ever, even though they used to be married. Sure. Presumably they got divorced, but we don't even know that. There are a lot of questions remaining about this odd storyline. Well, he went off to get gold, and then he won gold, and one would presume that he went back to the hot, flexible wife. No, I don't think so. But he got he got gold. It doesn't but, matter. And she said he didn't spiral until he lost the gold. Well, yes, he lost the gold, and then and then he left her. Yeah, and a woman has needs, Brian. What in the fuck does that have to do with anything? What has she been doing for the last year? Well, I don't know. Two years. Uh, sitting on the sidelines. Two lines. years. She said it here. And being so torn. So torn! This was an NXT promo dialogue-wise, but her performance was a thousand times better than anything you'll see in a typical week of NXT. So, anyway, I love that. We had another wacky video package. They're showing all the merchandise for sale. Letting you know that at any time you can go to shopaew.com and buy a couple of shirts or a, a you know this golf, Miro story is like. It's like if you're a big fan of dinosaurs as a little kid, mm -hmm. and uh, and someone just one day says, "You know them dinosaurs died." Oh yeah, yeah. Comet hit the Earth. That's all. <laughs> you're like okay. Was there more? Like, what happened when the comet hit the Earth? How did the comet hitting the Earth cause the dinosaurs to die? Like, there's a lot of this story that, like, for two years, we just have, he won the title, he lost it, he forsook, if that's even a word, his sure. God and his wife, and now, two years later, she's back. Well, what the fuck else happened in those two years? Can we have some more information? That's enough for you? Okay. Well, it's not enough for me. I'd like more. Like when Claire Lynch showed up. Remember that? Wasn't that her name in TNA? Stop it. Do you remember that? Yes. Claire Stop Lynch. Yes. yes, I remember Claire Lynch. Like yes. one day they just told us all about Claire Lynch. <laughs> like, who? What? Oh, okay. Yeah, that one worked out great. That Claire Lynch storyline. Anyway, you could buy a bunch of merch. But why buy something with no meaning and no purpose? You hear, we, we're hearing the voice of this narration. Your support means something to us because you mean something to us. And it intercepts the dark order of uh, Evil Uno, Alex Reynolds, and John Silver. And uh, you can, don't need to buy the merchandise of bad people. You can be good like us, they say. And I thought your name is literally Evil Uno. <laughs> You're not good. You represent anyway. the dark order. Yeah. I love it oh. that they're all dressed up, but um, but but Hungy, Johnny Hungy can't even put sleeves on his uh, on his, his giant on his suit jacket. Yes, yes. Some of us are built different, you know. Yes, we are, Brian. Need to be uh, custom made. Yeah, basically, or shop in the kids section sometimes. Sure. We had acclaimed an old daddy ass coming out. 
celebrating 13 long days as the trio's <laughs> champions. Yes. That's what they said. They announced their world tour. They won the titles in London. They did a bunch of stuff in Chicago. Now they're off to New York City where, as they put it, Arthur Ashe becomes the house of ass. Uh, they won the tag belts there Arthur last year. Arthur Ashe Stadium is what you're telling me? Apparently, yeah. They won the tag belts at this show last year. They're returning as trio champs. Then off to North Carolina, Oklahoma, North Dakota, and then D.C. What a strange itinerary that is. No yeah. mention of Seattle. Not yet. That's true. I guess that's a collision, yeah. Ray Phoenix versus Angelico. Uh, Where the hell has old Angelico been? Here's I a guy, guy I don't think I've seen for a year. He's just back. I think the last time I saw him, he was still teaming with uh, uh, Jack. Jack. And, yeah. and, and Jack's been gone a while. He, I, he did one squash match. He was getting squashed, and I want to say it was against Roddy. Good. And Roddy came in. Yeah. So here was the whole match. Phoenix had a bunch of dives. And Helico used a bunch of holds. Phoenix made a comeback. Kicks Serpentico while rock, walking the ropes. And pins Angelico with a rolling stunner, except Angelico did kick out of that, so Phoenix at the Phoenix driver and won. And this is like a complete squash. And Phoenix wins with his move, which causes Kevin Kelly to shout, I'd love to see more of Angelico on collision. Me too. Now, not a knock on Angelico at all. We all, we all like Angelico just fine, but there was nothing in this match to tell you, the viewer, that we'd like to see more of him. Right. He grounded the luchador and they got his ass beat. <laughs> it was a squash is what I'm saying. Well, yeah, it was a squash. And then it was really mm -hmm. weird. Like, they strongly teased that uh, Ray Phoenix was going to uh, accept John Moxley's open challenge in Moxley's hometown. And I was like, God damn, that sounds fucking great. And then when the show ended, that's not the match. Boy, is it not. No. <laughs> Maybe the exact opposite match. Tony Savani interviews FDR. They list all the teams they have beaten. The Briscoes, the Gun Club, Jarrett and Lethal, Bullet Club Gold, the Young Bucks. Who's next? We need to be on collision, they say. We need to be in the main event on collision. And if we're going to do that, we need more challengers. Hold on. Let me guess. Are you telling me we're going to get an open challenge? There are only two ways to earn a title shot in all elite wrestling. You can win a tournament or accept an open challenge. Or a battle royal. Or a battle royal. Uh, I'll put that in a tournament. You have to either beat a bunch of guys or beat absolutely nobody. <laughs> There's no in between. Well, there will in fact be an open challenge next week. Any young tag team. What team of geeks? <laughs> What's Tom doing? I don't know. Wow. You're asking us? <laughs> yeah. Any He's young in Montana tag team? yesterday. That's true. And they want to prove their worth to FDR and to AEW, implying outsiders may, may come in. So I'm sure that. Uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens don't have any belts now. I'm sure they'll accept this challenge next week. Yeah. <laughs> have they done an open challenge battle royal? I think that's we, every battle royal. We don't know who's coming. <laughs> Does anyone who wants to show up? Sure. I think that's every battle royal, basically. Hmm. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus... 
full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.